Welcome back, this is Prof G, and this is video three of five of our Swift midterm solution where you built an iOS app we called Ollivander's Wand. So let's code on, you wizards of Swift. So now it's time for part F, which is all about creating the new view controller to hold the spell descriptions. So let's go ahead and create a new view controller on the main storyboard, and we'll also add that show segue, and we'll make sure that its identifier is set to show detail. So back in Xcode, I'm going to hide the debug area, get back over to main storyboard, click on the library, search for a view controller, drag it over just to the right of our existing view controller, then let's click on the cell. You might want to do that in the document outline to make sure that you're getting the cell and not the title or the content view. Control drag over from cell to the new view controller, let go, select show segue, then select the little ball on the segue line, then in the attributes inspector we see the attributes for the segue, and we'll set the identifier to show detail. Now let's create the interface for our new view controller. It should look like this diagram on the right. The fonts are all Avenir condensed 24 point. The static labels are bold. The color is set to eggplant and you can find eggplant in the colored pencil or crayon box. So back in main storyboard, let's go into the library, find a label, drag it over right onto our new view controller. Let go in the attributes inspector. Let's click on font. We'll set the font to custom and the font family to Avenir next condensed, the size to 24 points. Then click done. I'll double click inside the label and change the text inside here to read spell data colon. Then I'll command D to duplicate this once, position it just below it. Then I'm going to highlight both of those labels, command D again to duplicate both of them. Now I've got four labels. I'll position the two below the other two. I'm going to drag the right side of what will be my spell name value and my spell description value to the right margin in the view controller. Then I'll change the default that's going to show the spell name to name here. And for the one that's going to show the spell description, I'll change that to description here. Then I'm going to click this top one that says spell name. And I'm going to command click on the second one so I highlight both of them. Then I can go up under font and set the style to bold. It changes both of the selections together. And I can go under text color and I can scroll all the way down here to custom then click on the color pencil area on the right hand side if that's not already clicked. And if you hunt around over here near all of these purpled colored pencils, you'll see one that says eggplant right up top. That's the one that you want. Just click on that. Looks nice and purpley. That's a magical color. Then we want to create a new Swift view controller, spell detail view controller .swift, that can do everything necessary so that this file can be used to write code for our new view controller. So I want to create this file right underneath my view controller .swift file. So I'm going to right click on view controller .swift, select new file. This is going to be a Cocoa Touch class. Click next. Make sure that you've selected UI view controller as the class that you're subclassing. Name the class spell detail view controller. Click next. Click create, and then just get rid of all the unneeded comments. Now back on main storyboard, we want to select our new view controller, go up to the identity inspector, and under class, select the file that we just created, spell detail view controller, press return, and we can see if we move our cursor right on top of the yellow ball, it indeed says spell detail view controller. So this view controller on our main storyboard now has the identity of the file we just created. Next up in spell detail view controller, add a value of type spell data named spell data. We head over to spell detail view controller dot swift and right underneath the class definition we'll say var spell data lower camel case colon spell data upper camel case exclamation point. Next for 16 let's create an IB outlets to hold the spell name and the spell description. They should be called name label and description label. Then we want to constrain the labels to constrain the spell name and the description so that they'll shrink or expand based on the width of the iOS device. Also make sure that the description label can resize to offer multi-line descriptions. So let's get into the side-by-side -side assistant editor. We'll click on spell detail view controller then option click on main storyboard. Then I'll control drag from this label it says name here. I'll let go just under the class definition. I'll call this name label, click connect. I'll do the same with description here and I'll call that description label. Now we'll get back into the standard editor mode and get on the main storyboard and we'll do our constraints. So my first label here I'll constrain to the upper left hand corner. Click add two constraints. Click my name label add constraints for that, and I'll constrain top, left, and right. Notice that the left and right are at 16 points. That's good. Add three constraints. The static label, it says spell name. It should say spell description. I got to change that, but it'll be in the top and left-hand corner. I'll add two constraints. Then for description label down below, I'll click on top, left, and right. 16 points at each of the two left and right margins. Add three constraints. And to make sure that we can see multiple lines for this description label, let's go over to its attributes inspector and we're going to set the lines to zero. If you want to build and run to test this out, this is looking pretty good as we go back and forth. 
and we can stop, head back to main storyboard, click on view as just to see how things look on an iPhone SE or on a Mac sized iPhone and the resizing and constraints are all looking wonderful. Next is question number 17. This is where you pass data between view controllers. So you wanna write code so that when a table view cell is clicked, the spell data in the tapped spell is passed to the spell detail view controller and the appropriate properties are shown in name label and description label. And the image at the right shows what happens if you click on Aloha Mora, we can see that the name of the spell is there, the description is there, the description label will extend for as many lines as are needed in order to be able to show that description. Also get rid of the lingering gray in the selection by setting the table view cell selection attribute to none. So remember how we pass data over from the view controller, we need to put a prepare for segue in the view controller. So we'll do that just before the last curly in the main class, but before the extension, say prepare for segue, select this with a return. Then inside we'll say if segue.identifier equals, and inside of the empty string, we'll say show detail is the identifier, and you can always go over to the main storyboard and double check to make sure that you've got your string in there. I usually go over here just to be triple sure because Xcode doesn't give you a good error if you get this wrong. So I'm gonna highlight what's inside the identifier here, command C, and go back into my view controller and command V to paste it in. And I had this right, this double check is just me being paranoid. I'm putting in a comment in here that says, technically we don't need an if since we only have one segue. And that also means that we don't need an else clause here either. We use the else clause only if we're gonna be adding a record and we're not adding a record here. Now inside that if statement, we wanna get the destination. So we'll say let destination equals segue.destination. We need to downcast it. So we'll say as exclamation point and then spell detail view controller. That gives us access to all of the properties inside of spell detail view controller. Then we wanna figure out which was tapped so we'll say let selected index path equals table view dot index path for selected row and we'll force unwrap that and it's totally okay to do this because it'll never be nil because show detail is only attached to a table view cell so the show detail segue will only fire when a table view cell is tapped finally this is where we pass over our data we say destination dot spell data and notice code completion knows that there's a spell data inside of our destination that's why we needed a downcast with the as exclamation point spell detail view controller we'll say equals spells dot spell array open bracket selected index path dot row close bracket then let's head over to spell detail view controller and we'll set up our interface. So I'm gonna create a function actually for updating the interface. So I'll call that func update user interface and I'll pass in no parameters. So I'll say open and close parens, open and close curlies and make sure that I call that right from within view did load. And you know, I don't have to do this next step in here but it's a good idea just in case there were a problem in passing over data. Uh, I'm gonna say if spell data equals equals nil to check to make sure that I've got something in spell data. If I don't have anything in spell data then I'm just gonna say spell data equals and then upper camel case spell data open parens this will give me the constructor for our struct and I'll just pass in empty strings for these three and the reason for that is to make sure that I never get a nil in spell data before I update my user interface otherwise if I try to read stuff inside of spell data and I've got nils in there my code would crash now this should never happen because we should always be passing over data but again building in this kind of error protection that's the mark of a good programmer and so now when update user interface, we update the user interface, we'll say name label dot text equals spell data dot name and description label dot text equals spell data dot description. Then build and run, no errors, hammer time. Let's see how things are working. Let's click on Alohomora. Ooh, the unlocking charm. We get the description, nice. How about Akio Locket? That's gonna bring Locket to you. Pretty good. Oh, and let's scroll down here, have a little Expecto Patronum. In case those Dementors are chasing after you, you'll get some information about the Patronus charm. Nice work, Swifter. On to the next question. Ah, uh, yeah, we wanna get rid of the lingering gray table view selection by setting the table view cell selection attribute to none. Super easy to do. So let's head back to main storyboard. Make sure that you click on the cell. Then we'll go up into the attributes inspector. We'll select selection and change that to none. And I'll do a quick build and run just to verify that this is working and clicking on Accio Locket. We don't see the selection in there, but the segue is working fine. Aloha Mora, no problem at all. Excellent. In the next video, we'll handle swipe, shake, animation, and sound.